The term, primordial ooze, or primordial soup conjures vivid imagery of Earth's ancient past, when life first emerged from a chaotic mixture of organic compounds. This concept has fascinated scientists, theologians, and artists alike, serving as a metaphor for creation, transformation, and the delicate balance between chaos and order. The idea that life began in a soupy mixture of chemicals, sparked by some form of energy, has not only been a pivotal theory in evolutionary biology but has also paralleled themes in mythology and esotericism throughout human history. The primordial ooze as a concept, however, goes beyond a purely scientific explanation for the origin of life. It touches on fundamental questions of existence, where did life come from? How did chaos transform into order? And what deeper forces govern this process of emergence? To answer these questions, we must explore the idea from multiple lenses, scientific, mythological, and symbolic. We will uncover how this idea has been interpreted across different cultures and epochs and how it continues to inspire contemporary thought. The scientific theory of the primordial ooze was first formalized in the early 20th century by Russian biochemist Alexander Oparin and British biologist J. B. S. Haldane. Independently, they proposed that the early Earth's atmosphere was significantly different from today's, comprising methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water vapor but lacking oxygen. This mixture, combined with the intense energy from lightning, volcanic activity, and ultraviolet radiation, created the ideal environment for the formation of simple organic molecules. Operin and Haldane's hypothesis was groundbreaking because it suggested that life could arise spontaneously from non-living matter under the right conditions. This idea, known as abiogenesis, was in stark contrast to the older notion of vitalism, which posited that a supernatural force was required to create life. The primordial soup hypothesis, therefore, shifted the study of life's origins from metaphysical speculation to empirical science. The breakthrough came in 1953 when Stanley Miller and Harold Huey, two American chemists, conducted an experiment that simulated the conditions of early Earth. They filled a closed system with a mixture of gases, methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water vapor, and passed electrical sparks through it to simulate lightning. Within days, the experiment yielded amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, proving that complex organic molecules could indeed form spontaneously from simpler compounds. This experiment was hailed as a major step forward in understanding the origins of life. However, subsequent research has revealed that early Earth's atmosphere might have been different from what Operin and Haldane imagined. Studies now suggest that the primordial atmosphere was likely more neutral or even oxidizing, leading to debates about whether the original experiment's results are applicable. This uncertainty has given rise to alternative theories, the deep-sea hydrothermal vent theory suggests that life began in the nutrient-rich, high-energy environments of hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. Here, extreme heat and chemical reactions could have provided the necessary energy for the formation of organic molecules. The panspermia hypothesis proposes that the building blocks of life, or even life itself, arrived on Earth via meteorites or comets. This theory raises the possibility that life may have originated elsewhere in the universe. The clay mineral hypothesis suggests that life began on the surfaces of clay minerals, where organic molecules could accumulate and undergo chemical reactions. Despite these ongoing debates, the primordial soup theory remains central to the scientific narrative of life's origins, symbolizing the mysterious transition from non-life to life. Long before the advent of modern science, various cultures and civilizations had their own interpretations of the primeval state. The primordial ooze, or its symbolic equivalents, appears in numerous creation myths as a formless, chaotic substance from which the ordered universe emerged. In these narratives, the primordial waters or chaotic matter often embody both creation's raw potential and the threat of unbridled disorder. This duality is central to many creation myths, reflecting humanity's attempts to comprehend the paradox of creation. In Mesopotamian mythology, the primordial ooze is symbolized by Tiamat, the goddess of saltwater chaos. According to the Enuma Eli, the Babylonian creation epic, Tiamat and Apsu, the god of freshwater, existed before all other gods, representing the undifferentiated chaos from which the cosmos emerged. When the younger gods began to disturb the primordial waters, Tiamat unleashed her fury, embodying the destructive aspect of chaos. She was eventually slain by Marduk, the storm god, 
who used her body to create the heavens and the earth. Tiamat's story is significant because it portrays chaos not merely as disorder but as a source of creation itself. Her body, torn apart by Marduk, becomes the very fabric of the cosmos, suggesting that chaos and order are two sides of the same coin. In Egyptian mythology, the primeval state is represented by none, the boundless, dark waters that existed before the creation of the world. The Egyptians believed that none was a formless ocean from which the first mound of earth, known as the Ben-Ben, emerged, bringing with it the creator god Atamra. This moment of emergence, known as the Zeptepi or, first time, symbolizes the transition from chaos to order. The concept of the Ben-Ben, a small, raised mound that first appeared above the waters, has profound symbolic significance. It represents stability, order, and the establishment of a structured universe out of the formless void. Temples in ancient Egypt often featured a stone pillar called the Ben-Ben stone, symbolizing this primordial moment of creation. In Greek mythology, the concept of primordial chaos is central to the creation narrative. Hesiod's Theogony describes chaos as the first entity to exist, a gaping void that gave rise to Gaia, Earth, Tartarus, the underworld, and Eros, love. This chaos is not simply a void but a formless, unordered state that precedes creation. From it, the structured universe gradually takes shape as different forces and deities emerge. This Greek interpretation of chaos as a generative void influenced later philosophical thought, including the works of Heraclitus and Plato. The philosophers saw chaos as a necessary precursor to order, a realm of potential from which all things spring. The Bible and the Qur'an also contain references to primordial chaos, often symbolized by water. In Genesis, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, before God commanded, Let there be light, Genesis 1 2 through 3 KJV. Similarly, in the Qur'an, Allah speaks to the earth and sky, commanding them to come together, willingly or unwillingly, 41 11. In both traditions, creation begins with the subjugation of the chaotic waters through the power of divine will. In these Abrahamic traditions, the primordial waters are not malevolent but represent a potentiality that must be brought into harmony by divine command. The act of creation is thus seen as an assertion of order over chaos. In Hindu mythology, the concept of the primordial ooze appears as the Kshura Sogara, or the cosmic ocean of milk, from which the gods and demons sought the nectar of immortality. According to the myth, the gods and demons, led by Vishnu, used Mount Mandara as a churning rod and Vasuki, the serpent king, as a rope to churn the ocean. This process, known as the Samudra Mandan, brought forth various treasures, including the moon, the goddess Lakshmi, and finally, the nectar of immortality, Amrita. The Samudra Mandan myth is a powerful symbol of creation arising from the interplay of opposing forces. The cosmic ocean represents the undifferentiated primordial state, while the act of churning symbolizes the dynamic process through which order and structure emerge. This narrative suggests that creation is not a single act but an ongoing process involving tension, conflict, and resolution. In Norse mythology, the universe began in Junungagap, a yawning void bordered by the fiery realm of Muspelheim and the icy realm of Nivelheim. When the heat of Muspelheim met the frost of Nivelheim in the void, the melting ice formed Ymir, the first giant. Ymir, in turn, gave rise to other giants, and his body became the material from which the gods created the world. Janungagap is similar to the Greek concept of chaos, a formless void that is both nothingness and potentiality. The myth's emphasis on the interplay between fire and ice reflects the idea that creation arises from the balancing of opposing elements, a theme that resonates with alchemical traditions. The idea of the primordial ooze also has a rich history in alchemy, where it is often associated with prima materia, or the first matter. Alchemists believe that all material substances could be reduced to a single, undifferentiated substance, the prima materia, from which they could be transmuted into purer forms. This substance was sometimes referred to as the mercurial water, a chaotic fluid that contained the potential for all creation. Alchemical texts describe the prima materia as a dark, chaotic substance that must undergo purification through a series of transformations, including calcination, dissolution, and coagulation. The goal of these processes was to create the Philosopher's Stone, a legendary substance that could transmute base metals into gold and confer immortality. In this context, the primordial ooze represents both the base state of matter and the alchemist's own psyche. 
The process of transforming the prima materia mirrors the alchemists' spiritual journey, as they seek to refine their own chaotic impulses and achieve enlightenment. From a symbolic perspective, the primordial ooze represents the unconscious, the formless state of mind from which thoughts, emotions, and identities emerge. Swiss psychologist Carl Jung identified similar themes in his concept of the collective unconscious, a realm of primordial images and archetypes shared by all humanity. In Jungian terms, the primordial ooze is akin to the prima materia of the psyche, a chaotic potential that must be shaped and integrated into the conscious self. Jung's theory suggests that the process of creation, whether in the universe or within the human psyche, is an act of differentiation, where the ego emerges from the undifferentiated sea of unconscious drives and instincts. This interpretation aligns with the broader theme of duality, the primordial ooze is both the source of creation and the darkness that threatens to overwhelm it. The concept of the primordial ooze has permeated modern thought, appearing in everything from science fiction to philosophical discourse. In literature, it symbolizes the raw potential of life, the fear of regression into chaos, and the quest for understanding our origins. In science fiction and horror, the primordial ooze often takes on a more sinister connotation, representing the fear of the unknown and the threat of reversion to a primitive state. H.P. Lovecraft's Mythos frequently employs themes of ancient, chaotic matter and monstrous entities emerging from primordial depths, embodying the terror of humanity confronting its own insignificance in the face of cosmic chaos. Films like The Thing and Annihilation also explore this theme, depicting shapeless, mutating entities that blur the boundaries between life and non-life. These stories use the primordial ooze as a metaphor for the breakdown of identity and the loss of control, highlighting the fragility of order in a universe governed by chaos. Postmodern philosophers such as Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari have explored similar themes in their discussions of chaosmosis, the dynamic interplay between chaos and order in the formation of systems, identities, and meanings. In their view, the primordial ooze is not a historical reality but a metaphor for the continuous flux underlying all structures. Every moment of stability is underpinned by a sea of chaotic potential, constantly threatening to dissolve boundaries and disrupt hierarchies. This philosophical perspective suggests that creation is never complete, it is an ongoing process of emergence and dissolution, where every act of order carries within it the seed of chaos. In contemporary environmental discourse, the primordial ooze has been reimagined as the interconnected web of life. The realization that life emerged from a shared origin has ethical implications, reinforcing the idea that all living beings are part of a single, continuous process of evolution. This perspective encourages a sense of stewardship and responsibility, emphasizing that humanity is not separate from the rest of nature but deeply embedded within it. The concept of the primordial ooze, whether viewed scientifically, mythologically, or symbolically, encapsulates humanity's ongoing quest to understand the nature of existence. It represents both the beginning of life and the formless potential that precedes it, a state of pure possibility that contains within it the seeds of creation and destruction alike. Throughout history, the primordial ooze has served as a powerful metaphor for the mystery of life's origins, the tension between chaos and order, and the eternal cycle of emergence, transformation, and dissolution. It is a symbol of the creative forces that shape the universe and the chaotic depths from which all things spring. In the end, the primordial ooze reminds us that life is not a static state but a dynamic process, a continuous unfolding of potential in which order and chaos dance together, shaping the cosmos in their eternal embrace. Whether we approach it through the lens of science, mythology, or philosophy, the primordial ooze challenges us to see creation not as a singular event but as an ongoing, ever-evolving act of becoming.